Code Red, The Red Monster, Crimson Tide, Strawberry Week. There's so many euphemisms for having your period, whether it's your friend visiting, Aunt Flo, that time of the month. A lot of coded language, you know, it was always your friends here, right? Bloody Mary. Carrie at the Prom is definitely my favorite one. I love that it evokes all the power and horror. Lady business. <laughs> I have my lady business to attend to. Checking into the Red Roof Inn. <laughs> I don't know how the hotel chain feels about that. That's just something that we've grown up with, right? I've always thought that it was something embarrassing that um, I had to hide. I would never talk about it. I wouldn't talk about it with my friends. I wouldn't talk about it with anyone. We didn't talk about it at all. We have to mask it with other phraseology, and that makes the taboo persist. This sends the wrong message to little girls that they are not treated equally because they were born female. So in the United States, sales tax is levied state by state, and each state decides if it wants to have a sales tax, what it wants to exempt from sales tax, and usually it's food and prescription medication. I think we'd all agree food is a necessity. Same thing with prescription medication. Probably most of us quickly say, sure, if you need a life-saving medication, it should be as affordable as possible. But it happens that Rogaine is a prescription medication. It raises some questions about what kind of parameters we're putting around how we define a necessity and who's making that call. The issue is that where states have the ability to call things a necessity and provide an exemption to make them more affordable, they've somehow left tampons and pads off the table. So while I was doing tampon tax advocacy, I thought it would be important to demonstrate the kinds of items that states have chosen to exempt from sales tax. Cowboy boots in Texas, tax exempt. Barbecued sunflower seeds in Illinois. Gun club memberships in Wisconsin. Mardi Gras beads in Louisiana are tax exempt. The list kind of goes on and on. And when potato chips make the cut and tampons don't, I get kind of mad. I was told not to start the show with this um, because I guess I talk about my period a lot. I bleed once a month, it's happening right now. I don't know what to tell you. It's one of the craziest things that my body does. And it only does it for a period of time and then it just goes away. It's wild. And we all should talk about it all the time. I think that I made a point of talking about my period and women's periods on my show because I think that the more we put progressive ideas into mainstream media, the more likely the culture will change appropriately. Something that happens to half of the population once a month shouldn't be a taboo subject, I think. I mean, to be totally honest, and I'm sure I'm not the first person to say this, but like if men had their periods, it would be like fucking celebrated. You know, it would be like a holiday. They would get the week off of work and probably the week before and then like the four days after their period ends so that they could recover. I, it would just be a different, it would just be a different, <laughs> different experience. But men do not get periods. Women get periods. In rural Nepal and, and other parts in the global south, um, it's believed that people who are menstruating, you know, can't enter temples and will, will, will spoil food and cause vegetation to corrupt. And I think it's kind of easy to assume that there's this like other, like, yeah, that happens over there. That couldn't happen over here. It's just untrue. You start to hear from students about how hard it is to be productive in school, whether they can't afford the products or don't have access to them when they need it. You hear from people who are incarcerated what it means to lack total agency and have to, you know, beg and barter for these products. And you think, that, that can't be this country, but it is. I went into a shelter in 2005. Um, it's actually, it's a heartbreaking situation. If you have to pick and choose, do I buy food for my child or do I get 
my sanitary needs, that's kind of hard and no one should have to experience that. It's demeaning. It makes you feel very um, sad. It's depressing. Depending on your neighborhood where you live, you know, having to go into a store, for example, and ask for credit. The owner can tell you yes or they can tell you no. If you can't even put a loaf of bread on the table, how do you expect for a person to buy a box of tampons that may be $5 and change? I've seen and I've heard mothers do all type of things just to get money to make ends meet, going out onto the streets with their babies, in and out of trucks. What's to say you're gonna come back? What's to say your child is gonna come back? Most mothers, they will put that food on that table. The average mother will put that food on the table for their children with the last five in their pocket, and she will find other ways to get the other necessities that she needs. Just last week, we had a woman come in, and she was in tears, and she was wrapped in a blanket from the waist down. And she said, I've came on my period, and I've just soiled myself. And, and she was crying. She was embarrassed. Many times, um, what you have on is what you own. And she'd already, you know, kind of made the skirt <laughs> with this, uh, you know, old, um, it's the blankets they hand out to the homeless. So it's a rough kind of uncomfortable blanket that she was using as a, a bottom. And, um, and I'm sure if she had not been able to come to us, she would have probably had to go to the bathroom and, and create something to, to staunch her flow until she could get the supplies she needed. We had a, a, a period of time here where um, the toilet paper kept being stolen. And generally speaking, it was women who were stealing the toilet paper because they were fashioning um, what they needed out of that and, um, and you just couldn't pay for it, right? I mean, here's a little known fact about being poor in America. It costs a lot of money to be poor. When you can't do things like buy in bulk, um, or have to rely on check cashing places or don't have a credit card. Everything costs more. Um, and menstrual products are not an exception. So there's not a hard and fast number for how much they cost. And, you know, oftentimes people will, will show me a Google search and they'll say, well, I just looked at walmart.com and, and you're wrong when you say it costs $10 because here's a box for four. But again, that presupposes I have a mailing address, that presupposes I have a credit card, that presupposes I have the ability to purchase these items online at the day that you saw that price. And that's just so unfair. That's just so patently unfair that for those who can afford it least, it costs more. It costs more than it costs me. Mama! Oh, that's uh, I'll take this off. Just the pen! Good girl. Drop it! Drop! The concept of donating menstrual hygiene products isn't on folks' radar. So even those who donate aren't thinking that they should be donating these products. So summer 2015, after a year of exercising and eating healthy, I lost a significant amount of weight and needed new clothing. And I went online and I found an organization in DC that could use some bras. And I called them up and I said, is this true? Do you really need bras? What else do you need? Because I don't know what I don't know. And that's when he told me maxi pads and tampons. And that was the first time in my life that I'd ever thought what it must be like for a woman experiencing homelessness to also have her period month after month after month while living on the streets or in transitional homes. And all I did was post it on my Facebook page. And I'm just a suburban mom. And it exploded. Maxi pads! Um, it might be easier to go on the top one bras were showing up at my doorstep, maxi pads and tampons were, you know, being shoved in my kids' backpacks. They were basically like tampon mules. And I realized that this little collection could do a lot of good for women and girls in need. Um, so welcome to my basement, which is kind of like maxi pad and bra central. So, I, I just, we keep here, we have 
probably 20 to 25,000 products of pads, tampons, and so I don't know these people who are mailing me the maxi pads and tampons, but they come from all over, right? There's Austin, Texas, and New Hampshire, and Virginia, and Alaska, and New York, and I think that in it's primarily women donating, and they they just get it because if you don't have pads and tampons to manage your menstrual hygiene flow, it really makes everything else you have to do that day and week that much more uncomfortable. So I'm the second girl of five girls. So I am the second oldest. I have three younger sisters and one older sister. And the four oldest of us went to the Air Force Academy. I remember once at the Academy, I didn't notice that I was bleeding through like onto my chair. So I was in this math class with mostly guys. Class ended and it was time to go to the next class and I got up and realized I had bled onto my chair, which was just the most humiliating, awful moment. There was nothing in the bathroom. There's like six minutes in between and you can go to the bathroom during class, but it doesn't lend itself to a whole lot of flexibility. If you're bleeding and you're in the middle of your parade, you can't just like run out and go to the bathroom. I remember being in a formation once and really having to go to the bathroom. We had been in this formation for maybe three hours. That means you're lined up. Um, and it's really obvious from afar, whoever was judging us and grading us or watching us, if someone fell out and went to the bathroom, they didn't want that. And so you really had to stand there. And I took all the rules like pretty seriously too. And so I remember like finding a female cadre and asking her, can I go to the bathroom? And she like, she didn't want to let me, you know? And she said, is it, or is it an emergency? And it was almost like she was asking me, do you have to go, like, are you on your period, pretty much? And I remember, I think I said, basically, yeah, it's an emergency, and she took me. But it was like a big ordeal to have to ask to, ask to go. So it was already a stressful environment, and it was just something that adds to the stress. You have some choice your senior year of what job you'll do after you graduate. I chose to do um, missiles. Pretty typical of a missileer's life is that you spend the night in the capsule um, and you kind of monitor and manage the missile field for your 24-hour shift. If you were on your way out and you realized you didn't have anything, there would be an added like element of fear, like, oh my gosh, what if I start? I, there are no other women out there. And when there's 12 guys upstairs and one guy in the capsule with you, it's just not the most comfortable thing to get on the phone and say, hey, can one of you go out and buy me something? Women would try to leave tampons and the guys would throw them away because they were like grossed out by it. <laughs> he said something like, that's disgusting. I don't wanna have to look at that. I think society has come to view hygiene products related to women different than hygiene products related to men because rampant misogyny still exists. Until there are more women in positions of power, in decision-making roles, traditionally it's been dominated by men and men are not necessarily thinking of women's need and if women's voices aren't at the table, we need to pick up our chairs bring them to the table, sharpen our elbows, make a space, and say, here's what we need as women. When I first began talking about tampons and tax policy, testifying in front of mostly male colleagues on the House Ways and Means Committee, in front of the New York City Council, uh, about how there is a significant population of individuals uh, who cannot afford menstrual hygiene products. There were a lot of people who thought and told me that I shouldn't be talking about these types of things in public. As if because I am a woman 
and I talk about menstruation, then I will be seen as someone who is not serious and who focuses on issues that are not important. Uh, but we all know here that this is a very serious issue and it is very important. I think of it as a human rights issue. And in the United States of America, the fact that there are women, whether they are girls in schools, women in prisons and homeless shelters, to women working in large companies, uh, that the fact that there are people uh, who aren't able to afford these products and as a result may miss school, may miss work, um, face certain stigma. I think that it is something that um, our society uh, in America needs to feel more comfortable talking about. So this is a bathroom that anyone in the public can use and as you can see it requires money to get tamp pads and tampons and oftentimes even if you had a quarter it's often empty and nothing comes out even when you need it. And do you, do you think in your experience, like, do you carry a quarter? No, no I, I barely have cash on me. <laughs> right, I don't know if anybody carries. Right, and they anymore. don't take credit cards, so it'd <laughs> be hard to get a product. So that's part of our bill that products would be accessible for free in bathrooms like this in all federal buildings, just like toilet paper and paper towels are as we talk about uh, flexibles and health savings accounts, um, that's where federal law kicks in. And the fact that they cover certain products, certain items, uh, contact lenses, band-aids, crutches, condoms, you know, but don't necessarily cover uh, these products show that women are treated differently. We think that it is a luxury uh, to be able to have uh, an item designed for even though we're more than 50% of the population. This sends the wrong message to little girls all over the world, all over uh, America, that by them being born a female, that they are not treated equally, that they will have to possibly face uh, additional consequences uh, because they were born female. I knew that in my middle school we had uh, the dispensers in our bathrooms and I just assumed they worked. And then in eighth grade people told me, oh no, they're always empty. And I thought, that's really stupid because why have them if they're not going to work? And then I got to high school and uh, my school didn't even have the dispensers and I thought that's even weirder, they're not even like pretending. No one ever thought to ask because no one had really talked about it before, no one had ever really complained about it before until I brought it up. School already was ordering pads. Uh, they were just in the clinic and our nurse is a man and he, he's super nice and he's of course he's a nurse like girls go to him all the time because of their period so he's just he's really chill with it but a, a lot of people are uncomfortable um, going up to a man saying help give me um, something for my period and so a lot of the pads just like sit there. I looked through a whole number of options and then eventually decided on some rolling bins. We take the orders of pads so they don't go to the clinic, they come to us and then we fill the bins with the pads whenever they're running low. There's a stigma around menstruation and I thought they wouldn't accept it or like it, but then all the girls who were cheering, super excited, like people would come up to me and my friends in the halls and they'd be like, oh my god, this is so great. Before this, they had to like roll up toilet paper in their underwear or like tie sweatshirts around their waist or like I'm, some people, I even had to like just change their clothes and I think they thought they had to just kind of suffer in silence because it is what it was what it was when really it wasn't. You know, I feel like I want to destigmatize certain things that women have to deal with. And I think that it's part of the job of artists um, to try to put different kinds of messaging into the world. I feel like I'm very nonchalant in talking about it. Um, so yeah, I think I've talked about it on Instagram stories. Um, I love a diva cup. I love a period underwear moment. You know, I really think the idea of, you know, hiding tampons in your sleeve or, you know, being embarrassed about asking for one is, uh, I, I don't, I just can't even wrap my head around it at this point. You know, we all, we all have to deal with this. So 
men and women should be over it. I like talking about my period. <laughs> I also have two little girls and I want them to know that this is a natural part of being a woman and there's nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed of. Okay. Here's some more colors if you wanted to. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, there's more thank you. Sure. No time like the present to have a conversation with your kids. And so they were four and seven. Periods are what women have a small. I would describe a period as um, once a month a uh, woman bleed and they need um, uh, feminine hygiene products, maxi pads, and tampons uh, to catch it. I think change happens slowly, and then there's times in the course of American history and other societal uh, and cultural histories where change can happen on a faster tra trajectory. It's not where I would like it to be, but we're on the right path. And I think there's incredible voices singing in tandem about period poverty and menstrual equity and raising awareness and raising social consciousness in America about this. You know, people will say that, you know, we're seeing how broken the systems are and it's time to fix them. I, I don't actually think of it that way. I think the systems are working exactly as they were intended to do, which was to keep women out of power and to keep the power structures from working for us. And ignoring menstruation is just as much of a part of that as all of these other cases that we're arguing now. I do think that men, you know, have a part in it by, you know, not clutching their own pearls when women are talking about their periods or their experiences with periods. And I think it would just help. I think it would help. We all wouldn't be here if it wasn't for somebody with a period. I think right now it's reached, a it's reached a crest and the water underneath is really beyond simmering, but it's boiling. I think we are in a menstrual movement. I don't know how long it will last, but we have a lot more work to do before we can say it's complete.